my can hear you well can i start ma'am with am i clear you? am yes, i clear yes, yes ma'am i'm back i'm back okay i'll i'll start the broadcast Ma'am, can I start with your permission? Not yet. Yes, please. Yes, Bella. Good evening, dear parents, my dear students, and the teachers. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the webinar today. It is indeed a time when we all increase our immunity. and work towards a better health i welcome to the webinar our principal dr amita mulla vatil dr atul kakkar ms tanvika kumar and mr ramesh chandra now i hand over to our principal dr amita mulla vatil to start the proceedings for the evening good evening everyone i'm so happy that you're all here today But just before I start, because we have three health practitioners from Gangaram, I would like to just ring a bell to celebrate the wonderful work that all our health givers, our doctors, our nurses, and anybody connected with the area of health is doing. Because we know how difficult it has been for them. and sometime during these conversations i'd be very happy if dr kakkar would just throw a little bit of light on the kind of work that is being done in his hospital and in the other hospitals around delhi i welcome you all to the series of uh, webinar 4.0 these are series that we started as a school community because we felt that we would speak on a variety of subjects that affected the life and times of the school life during the crisis a large group of parents teachers educationists and students are here in the virtual space with me thank you so much for being here i think this is a very very important subject on which we are going to converse today not only are we grappling with the whole crisis financially and socially but we are also grappling with it because its impact has affected us and our children both physically and mentally the school community has to face the emerging challenge of school opening along with the fact that we have to build the immune system within our students before they come back to school because they have to cope with the pressures of coming back after this huge hiatus and at the same time they're going to come back to a very alien space that was a school that they thought it was as a school we're looking at a sort of a four pronged approach to this one is that sanitization of infrastructure because we have to accept that we are not a hospital and so how do we open school without it being a hospital and how the parents have to accept that whatever we may do whatever challenges we may face in terms of sanitizing the school there can be issues the other is guiding parents to build the immunity in their children which would have taken a beating because they would be staying in their homes away from infections and also with the fact that there has been a lot of um uh, calling in for food there's been a lot of issues because there's been no domestic help there's been no exercise which has definitely affected the immunity of our children 
and we need to build it up during this month that we have before they come back to school. The other problem is that the whole issue of this online has played havoc with the sleep, sleep uh, cycles of our children. They have told me personally that they are sleeping very little or they are sleeping late into the night and automatically lack of sleep affects the uh, immune system in a, in a great way. So how much sleep is necessary? How far do we take this whole issue of uh, how stress develops because of lack of sleep? A very important issue that we have to also grapple with is lowering of stress levels. Because I think we need to understand that whether it is through meditation or through yoga or whether it is through breathing or techniques or exercises, we need to lower the stress levels which have really built up amongst adults and children across the world and in our homes. So to find the answers to these questions and more, we brought together a group of very fine people who are experts in their own fields and who are going to speak on and throw light on several issues that I have talked about right now. I would like to start with uh, introducing to you uh, Dr. Atul Kakkar. He's an amazing doctor, a friend and a guide, someone in whom all the dimensions of seva, gyan, and dharma meet. Thank you very much, Dr. Kakkar. He is the vice chairman of the Gangaram Hospital, the Department of Internal Medicine. He's the fellow of Royal College of Physicians of Glasgow, the examiner of the Royal College of Bhutan and Diplomatic Board, the primary investigator for many clinical phases of trials of drugs, the recipient of innumerable awards, and a specialist in many fields. Here I would like to add that his son has created face shields for doctors. And his son, interestingly, Udit, is a Springdalian. And these face shields have found a lot of resonance in practitioners because they're made out of cornstarch and they're biodegradable. In fact, his wife, Shalini Kakkar, is a senior at the Deen Dayal Upadhyay Hospital. And she directly deals with corona patients and those who are in quarantine. In fact, Gangaram itself is a hospital which is divided into two, where one is dealing with the corona uh, patients and the other is dealing with regular hospital work. So I say that this family is a family of corona missionaries. I don't like to use the word warriors because I connect it with war and there's enough aggression anyways with the way that we're looking at what is happening. The second person who is going to be speaking to us is Tanvika Kumar. She's a research scholar and a dietitian at the Gangaram Hospital. She's a PGD in dietics and food management, and she has done development of food using functional, natural, and nutritional ingredients. The nutritional care of service personnel she takes and she attends to healthcare people. We then have with us Sri Ramesh Chandra. Ramesh Chandra ji is a yoga and lifestyle consultant. For 22 years, he's been an integral part of the alternative medicine of homeopathy and Ayurveda at the Gangaram Hospital. He's a chairman of the Healthy Mind Mantra Yoga Foundation. And he's also a, re a renowned national and international yoga and lifestyle coach. In fact, he has dealt with coronary heart diseases, diabetes, blood pressure, joint pain, through power yoga, through pranayam, and through hastamudras. These are the wonderful panelists we have right now. I would like to start with Dr. Kaktar. Doctor. Principals have been constantly overwhelmed with the post, present, future guidelines, new guidelines, and other guidelines in school opening. And the entire focus has been on hygiene, on entrances and exits, 
And I think that the new normal will be more on conservancy material. It'll be on detergents, on soaps, on phenyl, on hand sanitizers, on mops, on brushes, on digital thermometers, on checking flu and cold and cough and fever of, of our children. And sanitizing entries and creating tunnel gates through which they can come in and looking at toilets and classrooms and canteens. It is a very daunting task. After all, we are a school. We are not the ICU of a hospital. How do we, how do you as a doctor look at these issues? Because in the perspective of the fact that there is, we, we have to deal with immunity, we have to deal with, with infection, we have to deal with the fact that we also have to do learning. How far do you think we as a school or as schools across the country will be able to cope with this because this seems to have become a medical crisis in the school rather than a learning crisis. In fact, it's been combined. So I look forward to your uh, deliberations, Dr. Kakar. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, let me just start with this. Uh... So my talk is going to be on two parts. The first is, let me just introduce a little bit on immunity. And the second is how we can reopen the school and how we can go back safely to our workspace. So uh, let me start with a, a quote, which is very famous. It says, the natural forces within us are the true healers of disease. And when we are talking about this, what we are talking about is a condition called immunity. It's a condition where we can, uh, uh, we can overcome the disease and protect ourselves from unwanted organisms. And it's usually said the road to the health is paved by good intestines. And when we talk about it, it's the largest immunity is related to the uh, intestines. And if we have good and proper meal, it can lead to good uh, uh, immunity. The other important concept is the uh, concept of herd immunity. It basically means a reduction in likelihood of someone to catch the disease because of significant proportion of people they in the community which are immune to it. So if you look at this, the person here in the red has already infected the other people and gradually till at least significant proportion of the community are uh, having this kind of infection, the herd immunity will not develop. The word herd comes from a group of animals. And this basically shows you, it's a very interesting slide. It shows you about two uh, types of dots. One is a gray dot and the purple dot. And for developing herd immunity, at least 60% of the people should be having that infection. That's seen in the first portion. But if you see the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, picture from the other people, uh, other cities which are available, close to 10 to 15 person right now, they have this kind of antibody. So herd immunity is still not developed for this kind of infection. The other concept which I uh, would like to uh, talk about is something called passive and active immunity. Passive uh, immunity can be passed through the mother's milk, which is very important. And up to two years, it has found to be very ben beneficial. It could also be passed from uh, a person who has got infected uh, by taking his blood, which also is now one of the important ways of plasma therapy. The other way of, uh, the other type of immunity is called active immunity. And in active immunity, either the person develops the infection to develop the antibodies or through artificial, artificial way through vaccinations. So when we talk about immunity, there are lots of diseases, right from a viral infection to aging, to skin problems, to allergies, and also autoimmune diseases, which can really be related to a poor immunity in our body. But one can train ourselves to uh, improve the immunity with moderate exercises, with uh, diet, with stress uh, control, with good hygiene and vaccination. So these are the recommendations from WHO. 
that in the age 5 to 17 years, at least these uh, children should be exercises at least one hour per day. And at least there should be session of three uh, times in a week of muscle strengthening. But however, I think our children are not doing to that standard. And what you can do from home are simple exercises like running, skipping, jogging, exercising, and even power yoga. The other thing which is important is to boost the immunity. And this are the, uh, the foods which are associated with good immunity, the red, green, orange, yellow, the beans, the, nu the nuts which are available. And if you see, there's very less of meat or the organ involvement or, or the non-vegetarian diet, which is a mean booster. However, um, um, the other types of uh, food which also can improve the immunity are the beetroot, the red uh, pepper, which has got a very high vitamin C, um, which may be responsible uh, for a good immunity. So this was the first portion of the talk. The second, which is more important to us, is now the challenges of opening the school. So this is a very important position paper, which has come from three different organizations. And collectively, you know, the recommendations are there, which includes the WHO Center for Disease Control in US, and also the European Center Disease Prevention, which tells us how we can minimize the risk of COVID in the workspace, how we can resume work after the closures, and how we can cope for high absentees. So, what we require right now is once the school opens, we allow only the essential workers entering the building. We should reduce the contact, the physical contact with the workers during meetings, during canteens, or during the breakouts. And wherever possible, there should be a spare working space for the office staff, for the meetings, so that the minim there is bare minimum contact with the people. And this shows you about the vulnerable group, which is old age, hypertension, patients who've got lung diseases, diabetes, cancer, and pregnancy. They should be allowed to work from home, and this should be the norm now. And the contact with uh, the other piece person should be less than 15 per, uh, minutes. And it is usually said that the distance between the two persons should be at least six feet. Coming to the break time, the break time should be staggered. And that is what will be the norm for the next few uh, months now. The common area should be clean, especially the, those ones which are touched very frequently, like countertops, handles, uh, tools, phones, uh, and uh, switches, tanks, and uh, uh, the taps. Uh, one should clean them during uh, wear, uh, wearing the disposable gloves. You can use something which is uh, available in the house, like bleaches, one person hypochlorite, but one should avoid spraying and use uh, only wiping methods to do all those kind of things. You should report all the illnesses to the medical room, and the medical room should be now alert because you may see, you know, a common source leading to infections from the school itself. The toilet, only one person is, uh, should be allowed at one time and there should be a signage outside and whether possible, you know, the main door should be left open. The soap and water should be freely available. Similarly, in the classrooms, the same thing, um, but there should be sanitizers also, the, which the students can also be carrying. The mask should be there. There should be a good, a good ventilation and if possible, Again, there should be a staggered uh, class timing and uh, not overcrowding. And you can leave uh, two decks between the students. Disposable of, uh, dispose of, uh, disposal of the weight, uh, waste will be the major thing which the school will also be challenged with. And uh, they should know where to be uh, throwing the yellow bag and the red bags and there are these recommendations which are there and which has to be learned and the proper disposal needs to be done for things like uh, the mask which the students will be wearing and also uh, the, uh, the face shield or even the gloves. The posters for stay home, anyone who has got cough, cold, 
and they should be told not to come to the school there should be a way of taking the uh, 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 taking the temperature at the entry and um, uh, these people should be told also about the hand hygiene the transport should be such that uh, they should be allowed only to have an individual transport in the school buses should not be allowed so finally i would like to say that the road ahead is very challenging it's an uphill uh, task especially in the absence of uh, the vaccines which are available and this is how you know we normally dress uh, when we see covid patient this is me with my team who uh, just seen a, a patient uh, just one day back and um, it's a, it's a very challenging thing you know like uh, and there's so many medical uh, you know the healthcare workers which are getting secondary infected thank you so much uh, thank you very very much dr kakkar for that very exhaustive uh, conversation and uh, the way that you told us how how we should look at school opening but yet uh, there are many of us over here who have many many questions lined up for you uh, yeah. a, a quick question before i uh, take it on to tanvika uh, you know i mean you, you have said all that but how how much do we keep cleaning is is what i'd like to know and what are the uh, how many uh, what shall i say uh, thermometers should be there uh, digital thermometers should we be having that gate which through which you know uh, that sanitizing gate through which they spray things and then the child moves into the building like they have it in the dda uh, office or in the banks um what is the kind of material uh, material by material i do mean material i mean apparatus that you need uh, along the corridors should there be those sanitizers fixed on stands all all over the place how many digital thermometers should be there how often should that uh, fever be taken Uh, should it be taken when they're leaving one is when they're coming in should be taken in the middle of the day uh, should uh, desks and chairs which are not being used in the classroom be completely removed you know so we we are sort of grappling with the all these guidelines have come but you know the whole day are we supposed to be cleaning the whole day are we supposed to be mopping the school the whole day are we supposed to be uh, cleaning the tops of the pots and the flushes the whole day i'd like your response on this because it's not a hospital and and yeah. you know manpower is also doing other things i'd like your response on this dr yeah so the first thing as the child enters you should be taking the temperature and only people who have uh, the normal temperature should enter you just need to take it once you don't need to take it any time uh, other than that the second is you don't require that sanitization tunnel because these are relatively healthy people which we are talking about the population is not going to be affected as what we see in the schools or, or in the uh, sorry in the hospitals so uh, i i don't believe that you should be uh, you know much concern about repeated sanitization but yeah if there is a common area which these people are using especially the toilets especially the doors in fact what we have left is all the doors of the hospital are left open there is no door which is closed also you should reduce the number of entry points so that you know the checkpoint becomes little easy so the entry point can be uh, reduced so uh, and there can be a just one single person a guard or one uh, a person who can just see and the person who is entering also enters with little distance so that you know there is a time where he can check that and that's the way forward and this is the uh, social norm which is going to be staying there for a little while now so uh, i believe that you know we should be getting tuned to all this kind of a thing and as far as uh, you know cleaning of toilets is concerned what we do is that you know a person is there and after each person who's using at least there should be some physical cleaning with at least water and little bit soap if it's possible otherwise it's very difficult to maintain uh, the hygiene of those common areas uh, thank you for that just two quick questions and i will take it on one is you uh, you mentioned something about the school transport so yeah. is the era of the school bus over we can't use it is it uh, and the other question is 
uh, what happens to air conditioners what happens to air conditioners i okay. mean do we put off the air conditioners because we are not an air conditioned school but there are air conditioned schools we do have air conditioners in the libraries in the labs in the staff rooms because apparently uh, there is this uh, i don't know whether it's true or it's a myth that you know air conditioning uh, creates uh, more infection so uh, what what do you have to say about the transport and the air condition so uh, firstly the transport like uh, you should avoid transport as far as possible and uh, they they should be coming on to their own transport but however if it's uh, like if it's very necessary what we do in the hospital that you should again space it out that not more than 10 to 15 people are using that bus so that that may be a possibility like if it's a, a basically an emergency and the students or the staff cannot come and as far as the air conditions are concerned uh, the common areas if it's there necessary then only the air condition should be on the temperature regulations are there that you should maintain that uh, and also if you are having air condition part of the door or window should be kept open so that there is a fresh air which is uh, thrown in uh, with the air conditioning right i'm going to come back to you uh, quickly uh, and I, i see some questions here but before that i thought that i would uh, be requesting uh, tanvika uh, because um, that's an important part of um, uh, you know so um uh, tanvika you're there and in the perspective of the school and the parent community how do we strengthen um, our children's uh, immunities um, we would like uh, some kind of a conversation on uh, you know uh, because you know canteens may not be operational or if they are what kind of food should that be in the canteen what kind of tiffin should be brought in because these are important for us because you know a lot of mums uh you know uh, will be uh, also working so uh, would you please uh, help us with this and now it's over to you tanvika greetings to everyone and thank you ma'am for bringing this topic forward could you please speak louder yeah could you speak louder yeah, yeah. greetings to everyone actually this is a really important topic in this era because in this era nutrition and dietetics has really taken a back seat everybody is very convenient with the ready made foods and they have uh, problems with time time constraints and a lot of other things because they have a lot of things to do and managing without the house help is really taking a toll on the children's nutrition so let's just discuss uh, about some uh, diet that will be very beneficial for immunity So are we doing some screen sharing yeah thank you yeah so diet and immunity they are very much related because without a healthy good nutritious diet immunity functions of the body cannot work well so let's just begin with the slides a healthy life tomorrow needs good nutrition today especially for children who are the nation who are the nation's builder right they are the future of the nation so we need a good nutritious diet today for everyone to make the uh, india to make india productive in the future let's take care of the five w's why to eat now critically for children this is very important because they are in a very critical phase of life they are growing developing they are uh, growing in high uh, in height in uh, weight they are of physically developing mentally developing emotionally developing and without a good diet that will be hampered so uh, what to eat now comes the question what to eat we are very uh, fond of uh, things like uh, uh, processed foods now that has to take a stand and now we have to take about home cooked food which will be nutritious also when to eat they, they have to follow a fixed pattern five to six small meals in a day and divide the meals throughout the day with a uh, nutrition with nutrition good nutrition in every meal where to eat eat in a pleasant environment with the family so that it fosters good nutrition and uh, good nutrition habits among everyone ways to eat that that includes good eating habits in the sense uh, uh, ways to eat 
uh, the how, the how we cook food, how we present food, because children can be very picky eaters, right? So uh, we need to incul we need to inculcate good nutrition habits something from the beginning. What to eat? So this is mainly what we we'll focus right now. Eat a balanced diet. The child should ensure, the mother and parents should ensure that the child eats a balanced diet, which should comprise one item from energy-giving foods, that is the cereals and fats. These are the main sources of energy, but healthy fats. Then comes bodybuilding foods, that is protein, from pulses and meat and meat products, milk and milk products, protective foods, which uh, helps the body fight from infections, especially critical in this uh, era of COVID-19. Protective foods include fruits and vegetables. As Dr. Kakar also discussed, we should have plenty of fruits and vegetables from every color. We call it a rainbow diet. We should include fruits and vegetables of every color throughout the week. The, uh, the, ch the child should consume five to six small meals throughout the day. And because of the... Uh, very uh, very high temperatures these days. Drink plenty of fluids, at least eight to 10 glasses a day because the, uh, because the body will be very dehydrated. But avoid caffeinated drinks. Uh, the child should, when the school reopens, the child should carry at least two water bottles uh, with him. Limit consumption of processed foods high in fat, salt, and sugar. Because there is no activity, children are Log, uh, children are at home, they, the, the physical activity is reduced, they are just playing indoors. Uh, they must do exercise and also take care of the diet they're having. They should not be very high in diet, a high, uh, a high fat diet. Let's move on on carbohydrates. So there are two forms of carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates are those which are very easily digestible by the body and uh, uh, there is no much fiber in it, like all this the donuts, cookies, coke, cookies, etc. Uh, complex carbohydrates include the whole grains, the whole grains and whole, uh, whole pulses and vegetables, which includes fiber and helps, the, uh, helps with the meta metabolism of the body. So school canteen especially must refrain from selling simple carbohydrates and must incorporate complex carbohydrates. Reduce or eliminate from the diet. Now, when we talk about fats, one of the energy giving foods, we must take care that we do not include the unhealthy fats, uh, like the saturated fats, which are present in red meats, processed meats and whole milk dairy products and trans fats, uh, available in vegetable shortenings, margarines, crackers, candies, cookies, fast and junk food, fried foods, bakery items rich in fats, other processed foods. Some dietary rich sources. Now, when the children are studying online, their screen time is actually increased a lot. Uh, forget about the video games. Even the classes are all, also online now. So there is a too much uh, strain on the eye. So we should take care of the vitamin A uh, content of the diet. We can get good vitamin A from drumstick leaves, fenugreek leaves, carrot, uh, uh, egg, mango, tomato, muskmelon, papaya. And vitamin D, because we're, uh, we're inside our homes and there is no uh, outdoor activity, our vitamin D levels are obviously going to be depleted. So we must ensure that we incorporate gingerly seeds, soya bean, walnut, maize, and ragi in the diet. Now, now uh, my plate for the day. This plate shows how much of what you eat should come from each food group. So as we can see, fruits and vegetables should consume the major portion of the diet. We should have plenty of fruits and vegetables of every color. Then come cereals and micronutrients, micro cereals. Uh, uh, these are like uh, all sorts of millets and the uh, staple foods like rice, wheat, uh, bajra, jowar. They, these should be included in the diet. And whole grains, not the refined ones, no maida. Uh, fats and oils, these should be uh, healthy fats, uh, rich in omega-3 and ome omega-3 uh, uh, oils, uh, which uh, can include canola oil, which can include soya bean oil, groundnut oil. Nuts and seeds are also very important. Uh, we should consume at least a handful every day. And then comes pulses. Uh, pulses are actually a very 
major source of protein, especially in the vegetarian diet. But we should ensure that we take pulses along with the cereals and uh, nutri cereals, right? Because the uh, protein content of the uh, food is important, but also the quality. The protein quality is increased when we take the cereal and pulse combination together. And milk and uh, milk and milk products should be a part of the diet. Now here are some immunity boosters. Several foods rich in antioxidant nutrients like uh, vitamin C, rich vitamin E and vitamin A, protein, iron, zinc, selenium, and omega three and omega six fatty acids boost immunity. So here's a, a quick recap about uh, what all food groups in, uh, increase our immunity. Under uh, dark green leafy vegetables. Amaranth leaves, fenugreek leaves, spinach are very good in immunity boosting. Vitamin C rich foods, lemon, amaranth leaves, orange, uh, melon, etc. And also uh, and also gooseberry, that is the amla. Yellow, yellow orange fruits and vegetables. Now this is something uh, very high in vitamin A. And this is very easily available. And it's very easy to incorporate in the diet. You just have to take care of the yellow, orange, and red color fruits and vegetables in your diet, uh, which are carrot, papaya, mango, orange, lemon, etc. Nuts, uh, almonds, walnuts, coconut, dry, gingerly seeds, safflower seeds, sunflower seeds, uh, pumpkin seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds, poppy seeds, niger seeds, mustard, mustard seeds should be incorporated. Millets like bajra, ragi, jowar, and are very helpful. Whole pulses and legumes like Bengal gram whole, horse gram whole, green gram uh, whole, uh, rajma, soya bean should be uh, very much in, uh, incorporated, being a rich source of protein and uh, other uh, minerals. Egg and non veg these should be limited, but and should be taken care that these are properly cooked and uh, should not be processed. Unprocessed meat should be included in the diet and not uh, processed ones. So lean meats should be uh, chosen like chicken, fish, and egg. Uh, milk and milk products, uh, curd, paneer should be included. Omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid rich oils uh, like sifflar oil, sunflower oil, corn oil, soya bean oil, etc. should be included. Herbs, spices, and condiments. India is a country with a very good uh, uh, food availability, right? Uh, in terms of garlic, ginger, black pepper, turmeric, uh, cloves, basil, that is tulsi, etc. So these should be included in the diet to boost immunity. So now nine tips for healthy eating. First of all, moderation is the key. Too much is not good. Too less is also not good. So we need to keep a balance. Moderation is the key. Don't overeat. If you feel the, uh, the stomach is full, don't overeat. But Ensure that the uh, meals are properly divided throughout the day. There are five to six small meals uh, throughout the day and balanced nutritionally. It's not just what you eat, it's how you eat. The preparation of the food is important. Fill up on colorful fruits and vegetables, uh, which we discussed like the rainbow diet. Include uh, every colored fruit and vegetable in the diet. Eat more healthy carbs and whole grains. Uh, healthy carbs, that is the complex carbs, and whole grains, whole pulses and whole grains. Enjoy healthy fats and avoid unhealthy fats like discussed before. Put protein in perspective. We should add a little of protein in every, in every meal. Add calcium for strong bones, available from a lot of sources like milk and milk products. Limit sugar and salt intake. Uh, because it uh, is not to be taken in plenty. Limit sugar and salt that needs to be taken care of because of our lifestyles too, because there is very sedentary lifestyles these days. Children are not going out to play. Uh, then set yourself up for success. So with this, I uh, extend my thank you to all of you. Eat healthy, stay healthy. Thank you so very much, uh, Tanvika, for that wonderful um, uh, discourse on what we should eat. Uh, there are a couple of questions that have come up. Uh, one of them is that, you know, if a child plays football, so how many eggs? I think some mother is worried that he's eating too many eggs in a day. So how many eggs should you be eating if you're a footballer? Though so right now, I don't know where the football has gone. But um, if you are a sports person, how many eggs is too many eggs? Or 
less eggs. Uh, he plays football for how many hours? That needs to be considered. No, I, I, I gather he would be playing it maximum for two, three hours. That's it. But otherwise, how many eggs in a day should a person consume? One full egg should be consumed. For the second one, it the only the whites. If there is a need for, the for higher, one, only protein, the uh, higher protein in the diet, is if there's a need for higher protein in the diet, one full egg is fine. The uh, second or maybe the third, if the uh, physical activity is too much, then if the, he has to take third egg, then only the whites. Only the white. Yeah, normally you avoid the yellow. The other thing is, uh, uh, there's somebody else asked a question about minerals. What kind of minerals should be there in the diet? Uh, Can you comment there, uh, on the minerals? Yeah, zinc, uh, calcium, uh, iron, folate, uh, these should be included in the diet. Especially now because of the immunity? Yes, ma'am. The fact that we have to build up immunity, there should be more zinc and iron and calcium. And, and so just give me four quick uh, names of four foods which are directly connected to these minerals. Uh, I'm gingerly seeds, soya bean, Bengal gram whole, uh, milk and milk products. These are a rich source of minerals. Right. Well, thank you very much for that. And I'm sure that uh, uh, we're going to be listening to what you're saying. And we'll also have you over, at least virtually in school, again to speak to parents. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Tanika. Okay. With that, I would like to now uh, call forward Ramesh Ji. Ramesh Ji, you know that kis tarha ki एक मानसिक तनाव हो गया है एक मानसिक स्वास्थ्य जो है वो बिल्कुल बिगड़ गया है लोगों का और हर एक डोमिनो इफेक्ट हो गया है जिससे स्ट्रेस लेवल्स इतने हाई हो गए हैं घर में डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस कभी अब्यूज और एक परेशानी हो गई है बच्चे एक साथ रह के भी परेशान है एडोलेसेंस नाराज हो गए हैं कि उनको एक जगह में दो महीने तीन महीने बंदी बना दिया गया है बेशक खुश हैं कि उनके माँ बाप उनके साथ हैं पर ये उम्र ऐसी होती है कि एक बच्चा चाहता है कि मैं थोड़ा आजाद रहूं अपने मित्रों में रहूं तो उससे डिप्रेशन भी हो गया है इससे अलग चीजें भी पैदा हो गई हैं एक किस्म का मोटापा भी आ गया है सेल्फ स्टीम जो होती है बच्चों की वो थोड़ी लो हो गई है क्योंकि जाहिर बात है क्योंकि वो एक्सरसाइज नहीं कर पाते हैं वो बाहर नहीं जा पाते हैं किसी से मिल नहीं पाते हैं मुझे अक्सर फोन आते हैं कि मेरी मुझे एक्नी हो गई है मैं अच्छी नहीं लग रही हूँ या अच्छा नहीं लग रहा हूँ मुझे अपने आप से चिड़ हो गई है तो अजीब और गरीब चीजें हो गई हैं हमारे बच्चों के साथ तो आप अगर कुछ इस तरह के योग के जरिए या ब्रीदिंग के जरिए या एक्सरसाइजेस के जरिए अगर आप कुछ हमें टिप्स दें क्योंकि जब हम वापस स्कूल लौटेंगे तभी भी हमें बहुत जरूरत है कि किस तरह के स्पोर्ट्स हम लेके आएंगे स्कूलों में क्योंकि अब वो कलेक्टिव स्पोर्ट तो अब है नहीं तो हमें ये देखना है कि हम क्या करें हम एक जैसे कहते हैं मेडिटेशन लाएं या एक माइंडफुलनेस लाएं या इस तरह के खेल खेलें जिसमें यू नो ज्यादा लोग इन्वॉल्व नहीं है तो आप बताइए क्योंकि ताकि फिर हम जब अपनी क्लासें शुरू करें तो हम ज्यादा भाग दौड़ कर नहीं सकते हैं किस तरह का योग करें क्या करें तो रमेश जी आपसे बेटर ये कोई हमें बता नहीं पाएगा अब मैं आपको आमंत्रित करती जी थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू गुड इवनिंग नमस्ते नमस्कार शुरू करता हूं मैं आओ मिलकर बैठे कुछ बात करें कदम से कदम ही सही चलने का साथ करें दूरी से दूरी बढ़ती ही चली जाएगी कभी तो खुद से खुद की मुलाकात करें हम लोग अक्सर आपने देखा होगा अभी जो हमारा पूरा विश्व परेशान है कोरोना वायरस के चलते इस पर हमने कुछ टेक्निक डेवलप किया हुआ है और सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट है ये वायरस उसी को इफेक्ट करता है जो किसी तरह की कोई प्रॉब्लम्स हो यानी हार्ट डिजीज डायबिटीज ब्लड प्रेशर यानी टाइप्स ऑफ क्रोनिक डिजीज उसे ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम्स होता है या जिसकी इम्यूनिटी सिस्टम बिल्कुल लो हो गई हो उसे ज्यादा परेशान करता है और जिसे भय अंदर से बहुत ज्यादा हो उसे भी ये ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम क्रिएट कर सकता है तो सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट जो मैं बताने जा रहा हूँ जितने लोग मेरे साथ जुड़े हुए हैं 
अपने शरीर के अंदर रोग प्रतिरोधक क्षमता को बढ़ाने के लिए फोर मेजर एस कंट्रोल कर लें तो मैं आ, वो बता सकता हूं कि आप 100 परसेंट अपने आप को फिट फील कर सकते हैं और आप अपने बच्चों को भी बिल्कुल स्वस्थ कर सकते हैं फोर मेजर एस क्या है फर्स्ट एस स्ट्रेस सेकेंड एस सडनटी लाइफ स्टाइल थर्ड एस स्मोकिंग और फोर्थ एस सेचुरेटेड फैट जो अभी हमारे डायटिशियन ने बताया बहुत सारी चीजें हमारे डॉक्टर साहब ने भी बताए तो हम इस पर ज्यादा डिस्कस ना करते हुए मेरे साथ जितने भी पेरेंट्स जुड़े हुए हैं जितने भी बच्चे मेरे साथ जुड़े हुए हैं हमने एक नई टेक्निक डेवलप किया हुआ है जो टेक्निक अपने आप में एक अनोखा है हमने कुछ एक्सरसाइजेस और कुछ प्रेशर पॉइंट दोनों को कंबाइंड करके अपनी रोग प्रतिरोधक क्षमता को हम कैसे बढ़ाएं या हमारे शरीर के अंदर अगर कोई प्रॉब्लम्स है उसे हम कैसे छुटकारा पाएं तो मैं उसी पे ज्यादा फोकस करूंगा तो आप जितने लोग चाहे मेरे साथ इस एक्सरसाइज को साफ साफ कर सकते हैं ये चूंकि इसका नाम ही है टेक्निकल चेयर योगा फॉर स्ट्रेस मैनेजमेंट एंड इम्यूनिटी सिस्टम को अपने बढ़ाने के लिए यानी रोग प्रतिरोधक क्षमता को तो पार्ट बाई पार्ट बाई पार्ट माइग्रेन पेन हेड एक कंसंट्रेशन साइनेसाइटिस हियरिंग प्रॉब्लम और आईज प्रॉब्लम इसके लिए एक्सरसाइजेस है और टू प्रेशर पॉइंट है कैसे करना है फर्स्ट स्टार्ट फॉर दी एक्सरसाइज फॉर दी ईयर किसी तरह की कान की प्रॉब्लम हो कान से आवाज आती हो हामिंग की आवाज हो सीटी बजने की आवाज हो सुनने की प्रॉब्लम हो सांस लेने में तकलीफ हो साइनस की प्रॉब्लम हो नाक की हड्डी बढ़ गई हो उन सब के लिए आंखों से कम दिखता हो उनके लिए हेडेक रहता हो माइग्रेन पेन हो चक्कर आता हो उन सब के लिए सारी एक्सरसाइज है तो शुरू करते हैं हम फर्स्ट एक्सरसाइज फॉर दी ईयर अंगूठा और अंगूठा के बाद की मैं थोड़ा सा अंगूठा और अंगूठा के बाद की अंगुली को से ऐसे काम को पकड़े सब ऊपर की तरफ दस बार इसे पुल करना है वन टू थ्री फोर रिलैक्स सेम एक्सरसाइज सेंटर से पकड़ के वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव रिलैक्स नंबर थर्ड कान के नीचे वाले हिस्से को पकड़ेंगे नीचे की तरफ वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव रिलैक्स देन अंगूठा को अंदर करके मुट्ठी बंद कर ले फर्स्ट फिंगर को बाहर निकाल के कान के पीछे वाले हिस्से की मसाज करनी है कम से कम पांच से दस बार फिर कान के आगे वाले हिस्से की मसाज करें पांच से दस बार इसके बाद नाक के साइड में नाक की हड्डी बढ़ जाती है सांस लेने में तकलीफ हो खराटे आते हो जिसके चलते नाक बंद होने से मुख हो जाता है और रात को सोने के समय गले से आवाज आती है उन सब के लिए ये बहुत ही फायदेमंद है इसके बाद कान को अपने दोनों हाथ की हथेली से बंद करें खोले ऐसे और झटके से एक साथ दबाव देकर झटके से छोड़ दें ये तो एक्सरसाइज रही कान की और नाक की अब नेक्स्ट एक्सरसाइज बच्चों के लिए भी ये बहुत फायदेमंद है आईज की एक्सरसाइज बहुत लंबे समय तक कंप्यूटर पे लैपटॉप पे गेम खेलते हैं किताब पढ़ते हैं गर्दन जो आंखों पे दबाव पड़ता है तो एक्सरसाइज फॉर दी आईज नेक सीधा रखना है कमर सीधी रखनी है चेयर पर बैठ के करें अपने आई बॉल को ऊपर की तरफ ले जाएं और नीचे अप एंड डाउन गर्दन सीधी रखते हुए गर्दन को ऊपर नीचे नहीं करनी है ऊपर की तरफ छत को देखें या आसमान को देखें नीचे जमीन को देखें अप एंड डाउन मिनिमम फाइव टाइम्स नंबर सेकंड लेफ्ट में पीछे देखें देन राइट में पीछे देखें आई बॉल को मूव करना है केवल नेक को नहीं घुमाना है नंबर थर्ड लेफ्ट में ऊपर देखना है और राइट में नीचे देखना है लेफ्ट अप एंड राइट डाउन लेफ्ट अप राइट डाउन मिनिमम फाइव टाइम्स रिलैक्स नेक्स्ट राइट अप लेफ्ट डाउन मिनिमम फाइव टाइम्स और नेक्स्ट एक्सरसाइज डाउन आई बॉल को मूव करना है क्लॉकवाइज एक बार और एक बार एंटी क्लॉकवाइज क्लॉकवाइज एंटी क्लॉकवाइज देन आंखों को टिमटिमाना है हाथों को रगड़ कर गर्म करना है जितनी तेजी से आंखों को टिमटिमाए उतनी तेजी से हाथों को जैसे ही आपकी दोनों हथेली ये गर्म हो जाए धीरे धीरे आइज को रिलैक्स कर लें ये आइज की एक्सरसाइज नेक्स्ट फोर एक्सरसाइजेस फॉर द नेक्स्ट 
लेग की फर्स्ट एक्सरसाइज है आप अपने हथेली को कान के ऊपर वाले हिस्से पर रखना है लेग बिल्कुल सीधा रखना है सामने देखते हुए ब्रीदहीन करते हुए हेड को पुश करें ब्रीद आउट करते हुए ढीला छोड़ दें कम से कम पांच बार सेम एक्सरसाइज दूसरे हाथ से दूसरी तरफ मिनिमम फाइव टाइम्स नंबर थर्ड उंगलियों को लॉक करके फोर हेड पर रखें श्वास भरते हुए हेड को पुश करें छोड़ते हुए ढीला छोड़ दें पुश करें ढीला छोड़ दें और फोर्थ एक्सरसाइज है हेड के बैक साइड में रखें एल्बो पीछे खींचना है कई बार इसमें गलती करते हैं एल्बो आगे लाते हैं आगे नहीं लाना है इसे इसे पीछे खींचे और हेड को आगे पुश करें श्वास भरते हुए और ढीला छोड़ दें ये पांच पांच बार एक्सरसाइज करेंगे जिसके बाद हम दो प्रेशर पॉइंट फर्स्ट प्रेशर पॉइंट ध्यान से आप लोग देख लें दोनों हाथ के अंगूठा को बाहर निकाल के ये दोनों अंगूठा दोनों आईब्रो के बीच रखना है श्वास भरते हुए हेड को पुश करें छोड़ते हुए ढीला छोड़ दें श्वास भरते हुए पुश करें छोड़ते हुए ढीला छोड़ दें दस बार और सेकंड प्रेशर पॉइंट है अपने अंगूठा के चारों तरफ ऐसे दूसरे हाथ के अंगूठा और उंगली के बीच ऐसे लॉक करना है और इसकी मसाज करनी है पूरी तरह से इसकी मसाज पंद्रह से बीस बार मसाज करें इस अंगूठा के चारों तरफ और फिर से दूसरे हाथ के अंगूठा के चारों तरफ पंद्रह से बीस बार अब नेक्स्ट एक्सरसाइज हम बताएंगे एनी टाइप्स ऑफ शोल्डर प्रॉब्लम किसी तरह की कंधे की तकलीफ हो कंधा और गर्दन के बीच के मसल्स में तकलीफ हो हाथों का कांपना हाथों का सोना हाथों में दर्द का आना सर्वाइकल की प्रॉब्लम उन सब के लिए टू एक्सरसाइज फर्स्ट दोनों हाथ थाई के ऊपर रखें श्वास भरते हुए शोल्डर को ऊपर उठाए छोड़ते हुए नीचे लाए फुल वाइल श्वास भरते हुए ऊपर छोड़ते हुए नीचे इनहेल एक्सेल इसमें झटका नहीं देना है ध्यान रखें मिनिमम फाइव टाइम्स मैक्सिमम टेन टाइम्स नंबर सेकंड एक्सरसाइज दोनों हाथ के उंगलियों के टिप्स को ऐसे मिलाना है कंधे के ऊपर रखें और धीरे धीरे कंधे को गुण घुमाए अक्सर इसमें गलती क्या करते हैं ये फिंगर स्क्वाजिटी जैसे रखते हैं और ऐसे मूव करते हैं ये एक्सरसाइज नहीं है टिप्स को मिलाना कंपलसरी है शोल्डर के ऊपर रखना कंपलसरी है नहीं रखा जाए यहां तक लाइए जहां तक आ सकता है और धीरे धीरे शोल्डर को गोल घुमाना है ये ध्यान रखें एल्बो आगे नहीं लाना है फिर आपको पता चलेगा इसमें कितना फायदा है और फिर दूसरी तरफ से फाइव टाइम्स और प्लीज एक्सरसाइज में स्माइलिंग फेस ये ध्यान रखिएगा अब नेक्स्ट एक्सरसाइज और इसके बाद हम प्रेशर पॉइंट एक प्रेशर पॉइंट लेंगे आपको पेन या पेंसिल अगर मिल जाए ध्यान से कर ले अगर किसी तरह की कंधे की तकलीफ हो पेन या पेंसिल ले लीजिए एक जैसे एक पेन जैसे मैंने पेन ले लिया यहां पे यहां से लेकर छोटी उंगली के जड़ से लेकर नीचे तक इस पे रखना है दूसरे हाथ से इसकी मसाज करनी है पूरी तरह से ऐसे मसाज करनी है बारी बारी से दोनों हाथ का अब नेक्स्ट एक्सरसाइज टू एक्सरसाइजेस फॉर द लंग्स एंड हार्ट की कैपेसिटी को बढ़ाने के लिए अगर सांस लेने में तकलीफ हो दम फूलता हो दस कदम चलने के बाद इंजाइना पेन हो हार्ट की प्रॉब्लम हो लंग्स की प्रॉब्लम हो उनके लिए दो एक्सरसाइज या फिर गर्दन में सर्वाइकल की प्रॉब्लम हो उन सब के लिए दो एक्सरसाइज और एक प्रेशर पॉइंट फर्स्ट एक्सरसाइज बोथ हैंड ऑन द चेस्ट ऐसे जैसे मैंने रखा हुआ है ब्रीदिंग करते हुए दोनों हाथों को ओपन करें और ऊपर की तरफ देखें ब्रिद आउट करते हुए वापस आ जाए फिर श्वास भरते हुए श्वास छोड़ते हुए धीरे धीरे वापस आना है झटके से नहीं आना है नंबर एक नंबर दो दोनों हाथ के अंगूठा को लॉक करना है श्वास भरते हुए धीरे धीरे दोनों हाथ ऊपर ले जाएं ऐसे ऊपर की तरफ देखें हाथ को खींच कर रखें श्वास छोड़ते हुए धीरे धीरे लीजिए एक बार करके मैं और दिखाता हूं इनहेल से श्वास छोड़ते हुए धीरे धीरे नीचे ये दो एक्सरसाइज गुड फॉर हार्ट एंड गुड फॉर लंग्स एंड गुड फॉर सर्वाइकल सर्वाइकलिस नेक्स्ट एक्सरसाइज जो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट है कब्ज गैस एसिडिटी फैटी लिवर शुगर कोलेस्ट्रॉल थायराइड मोटापा पेट का हो या शरीर का हो उस सब को कंट्रोल करने के लिए ये टेक्निक बहुत ही इफेक्टिव है इसमें हम तीन शब्द का प्रयोग करते हैं ह हम और हो यानी ह बोलते समय लिप्स ओपन हो जाता है हम बोलते समय आपका लिप्स क्लोज हो जाता है और हो बोलते समय लिप्स गोल हो जाता है और ये तीनों हमारे शरीर के अंदर जो मुख्य तीन ग्लैंड है थायराइड ग्लैंड एडिनल ग्लैंड और पिच्यूटी ग्लैंड ये तीनों को इफेक्ट करता है इसमें कपाल का प्रयोग होता है अलग अलग एक्सप्रेशन के साथ 
और करना क्या है दोनों हाथ के अंगूठा के बाद की उंगली अंगूठा के जड़ में लगा ले वायु मुद्रा के साथ दोनों हाथ घुटना पर रखें ऊपर देखते हुए यानी लिप्स को ओपन करके ह की आवाज के साथ कपाल भांति का प्रयोग करना है फाइव टू टेन टाइम्स अभी मैं बता रहा हूं आपको ये कम से कम पचास बार ज्यादा से ज्यादा सौ बार करना है लिप्स को ऐसे हल्का ओपन करके ऐसे आवाज में इससे आपका थायराइड ग्लैंड एक्टिव होगा रमेश जी आपने बहुत ही रमेश जी जरा आप मुझे इजाजत दें तो सॉरी सॉरी बहुत ही बढ़िया तरीके से नहीं नहीं बिल्कुल नहीं आपने बहुत अच्छी तरीके से समझाया है काफी कुछ सवाल भी आए हैं तो मैं ऐसा करूंगी कि अब मैं सवाल जवाब का आलम शुरू करती हूँ कुछ आपके लिए भी आए हैं कुछ डॉक्टर कक्कर के लिए भी आए हैं सो आई विल फर्स्ट थैंक यू वेरी मच रमेश जी बहुत आपने और ये हम रिकॉर्ड कर रहे हैं और ये रिकॉर्ड करके हम लोग अपने पेरेंट्स को भेज देंगे क्योंकि okay, ये okay. YouTube पे भी है और Facebook पे भी जा रहा है स्ट्रीम हो रहा है तो बहुत अच्छी तरीके से आपने समझाया काश ज्यादा वक्त होता तो हम धीरे धीरे समझते क्योंकि छोटी सी जगह में पर मैं समझती हूँ कि जब हम स्कूल वापस जाएंगे तो ये सब चीजें हम स्कूल शुरू होने से पहले जब घंटी बचती है और बच्चे क्लास में जाएंगे तो कुछ इनमें से हम कर सकते हैं सांस लेने की एक्सरसाइजेस कुछ प्रेशर पॉइंट्स क्योंकि बच्चे स्कूल में भी ब्लेंडेड लर्निंग करेंगे वहां भी वो कंप्यूटरों से सीखेंगे क्योंकि ये सिलसिला कंप्यूटर का तो चल चल चले चलता रहेगा जब तक अब बात शुरू हुई है सो विद दैट आई नाउ रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर कक्कर आई एम गोइंग टू बी आस्किंग यू सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चन डॉक्टर कक्कर आई एम जस्ट गोइंग बी रीडिंग आउट द क्वेश्चन फॉर यू एंड आई वुड बी ग्रेटफुल इफ यू गेव द आंसर्स शुड द स्कूल प्रेमिस बी डिस इनफेक्टेड विद विर ऑफ 753 or virex 256 before the school opens should this be reactive or proactive and uh, this gentleman says he's a senior director with jll and they handle uh, lakhs of square feet so um, i suppose you are aware of this virof 753 or virex 256 dr kakkar yeah ma'am actually these are basically alcohol based disinfectants so right. uh, perhaps once you can get it done that's not a problem or uh, the you know you could choose between the two because it's usually thought, thought that once it is done almost it kills 99.6% of the you know the germs which are there on the surfaces so that can be done it's a professional thing which can be done and uh, uh, yeah so that's okay that, that, so is that it a, is it a spray or is it a spray because you said try not to spray no ma'am uh, we don't spray it is a cleaning uh, of the surfaces which is through some liquid it contains alcohol right uh, perhaps uh, that right. that is what he uh, wants that you know it should be done right the other question coming up is how long should a student be at school is there any particular time should he be there you know from the morning when we start school from 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock should the timing be less uh your your what do you feel so uh actually there is no guideline i just saw also in the morning that whether there was a guideline for the time but in the hospital what we have done we have started with a very less contact time with lots of people there so we have mm. reduced to close to one third you know our opd really? are just running yeah so our opds are we started the opds also we are just doing it twice a week rather then we were doing it uh, you know every almost every day so we uh, so the time perhaps uh, would be uh, you know it's a debatable thing but yeah the contact time should be less and um, maybe to start with it will be just two hours three hours you know uh, at least they'll be in a habit of coming out now and it's a, actually a, a, a huge thing mm-hmm. because you know they've been in house for close to about three months four months and suddenly you tell them to come out so there's a Correct. fear so there's a fear factor so even if they come out for right. two hours right. to right. begin with i think that should be good enough ji right so what about the centralized ac people want to know is that because there are many schools which have centralized acs is it safe for the yeah. schools to have these centralized how do we because aren't your hospitals also centralized acs uh yeah our hospitals are centralized ac but you know 
the OPD sections, what we have there, we have less, uh, we have more number of footfall. We have stopped the centralized AC. So we have, uh, you know, uh, a place where we put all these uh, fans, which are there, fans are okay. There's no ventilation in part of the uh, hospitals. So we have put uh, exhaust fan there. Okay. So that's the thing. So central AC is a big no. That's not uh, the norm now. Uh, if there is individual ACs, yeah, you can do it. You have to maintain the temperature between uh, 24 to, I believe, 30, uh, with a humidity of 40 to 42 percent. These are all, uh, you know, written norms which are there, and you should keep one of the windows or the door partly open so that there's a fresh air circulation there. Right, right. So um, no wonder they haven't opened the malls and the theaters. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, the, you know, there are so many service providers that have come up and uh, somebody has written, Amrita has written that hypochloride is corrosive. So I was recommended by some providers that we should use UV rays for sanitization without human intervention, of, uh, of course. Is that a good and safe alternative, UV rays? Uh, Ma'am, the thing is UV rays can be done for small things like telephones that can be done for keys and all. The whole hospital can, uh, the whole, uh, the school, school cannot, uh, yeah, the UV rays. So mm -hmm. hypo is corrosive, definitely, but what you require is to dilute it to one person. It's an ordinary bleach which is available in the household and it's not difficult. We are doing it. The only thing is that it should not come in contact with the clothes because, you know, it causes, uh, you know, discoloration of clothes also. The surfaces are okay. All these surfaces right. which are marble and even the uh, the other, you know, uh, hard uh, surfaces, it's quite okay with this. So what should, thank you for that. What should be the uh, policy for fumigation of the medical room? Should it be fumigated daily? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, fumigation is a very extreme process where, you know, uh, uh, it's usually it's done. It's not required? You know, it, no, it's done for an, uh, base, uh, you know, hospital-based thing where, you know, you have an infected uh, person who, and uh, these, uh, yeah, you know, the students are going to come. They are all healthy and we don't expect, you know, fumigation to be done. You know, these sanitization of the surfaces and all the common areas is okay. Then, uh, right. There, there are, you know, there is also, there's a lot of anxiety and I can understand it that the parents feel because, you know, you are reading reports all the time that schools opened in France and Korea and uh, then they needed to close down rapidly. So uh, that will happen even in schools with us. Because yeah. if a yeah. corona case is detected, I, I gather the school will close down. What is your take on that? Definitely, ma'am. Like we, as I was explaining you about the herd immunity, we need to build the herd immunity for the community. So gradually, schools will be not immune to it. There'll be, you know, cases where in the school you should be, you know, ready for it that there'll be, uh, you know, transmission of corona in the school itself. But right. we have to take new precautions. We have to take precautions at the entry level. And then, uh, um, at you know, the individual levels by the mask and the hand hygiene and the other things, you know, the, uh, the sanitizers and the other things which are there. So that will be the way, uh, you know, forward for this kind of a thing. Right. So uh, what is advisable? Uh, should the school canteen be open or closed, you feel? School canteen. So, uh, school canteen uh, can be open but it yeah. has to have a staggered time and not more than you know just few yeah. students uh, yes, they have course. to you know that that can be done and also they should be using all disposable uh, you know cups and the plates and they should be discarded in the wide dustbin that's very important and the plastics can go if there's a plastic uh, component it can go in the uh, yellow dustbin but the other paper things has to go in the white dustbin. Right. I think we have to be, as you said, very careful about the garbage disposal. Yeah. Because that's become a huge issue. And where yeah. does one dispose it? Because is one supposed to dispose it with a regular garbage that people carry off? Or should it be? Because I remember that when we had those chemicals, we had to dispose them differently. Are they, is this burnt somewhere? So uh, any uh, ideas on this? Because normally, you know, yeah. garbage... Is, is a collective garbage space. We and are generating a lot of garbage in the hospitals also, and even in the clinics, if you talk about. 
so uh, there are private companies who come and you know take these gar garbage on regular basis you have to do a contract and the school should be ready for that kind of a contract also right then there's another question for you that you know uh, students are constantly using ear plugs so can you suggest some way to avoid ear infection okay uh, so the ear infections normally happen if uh, there is ear wax or the hygiene is not okay so one need to learn how to put the uh, ear plugs inside you don't need to push it you just need to roll it so that's one of the ways you know the students can be told you just need to gently roll it so that even if there's some uh, you know uh, obstruction which is usually the reason for the infection uh, that that should not happen and plus uh, the hygiene the hygiene of the ear is very important the wax maybe the one of the reasons which is causing this so uh, the other thing is that uh, does the virus only affect anybody who has a low immunity or does it i mean does, does it affect more people with low immunity uh no not usually it also depends upon what is the contact time also what is the viral load of that person so these are also very important things so supposing you know my immunity is very good but the contact time is so much you know like see husband and wife it's like that right. almost 100% chances that they'll have it so it also because they are uh, in close contact so that's one of the things and also it also depends upon what is the load of that person if it's a very high load they are bound to have some type of infection because the infective rate of this virus is pretty high hmm. right uh, the other thing that they wanted to know is about insomnia in kids how do you are there any tips for how to you know sort of cope with this insomnia and and do you think children should go downstairs in the parks and play and go for a walk right now uh, okay uh, so in, uh, insomnia uh, is a real problem especially with the electronic media which is uh, going on and it's usually said that you know uh, the blue uh, rays which are not very good for you know coming from the computers they're not very good uh, for the children and also you know it's said that you have to reduce the screen time but uh, with this kind of a thing going on i don't think that's possible but you know the measures which can be taken is before sleep at least one or two hours before there should be no electronics in fact they say that there should be no electronics in the room itself you should try to have the tv and all the other things in the separate room that is for as a part of the sleep hygiene the second is that um, there is a suggestion therapy uh, you know the students can be told themselves to say the okay you know you're feeling sleepy they are feeling tired and gradually you know, you know with the suggestion therapy majority of them they feel you know sleepy i don't think they should be given any medication uh, because of uh, you know it is usually very addictive right so uh, you know the other worry is that you know there are students who may be suffering from covid and uh, they don't have symptoms so uh, what will the school do in this situation because we won't get to know right yeah so we expect close to about 60 to 70% of the healthy children to have no symptoms absolutely or minimum symptoms Hmm. so uh, but uh, there is no way actually you know you can detect that unless you are doing a test which is a called a serological test for the whole population so uh, hmm. the only way is that uh, majority of them they would have you know some person in the family suffering so that may be one of the reasons from where you can come to know the other is that uh, uh, perhaps uh, if they have bare minimum symptoms they should be you know told not to come otherwise totally asymptomatic it's very difficult to pick up and uh, it's uh, it's difficult to you know uh, um, you know uh, also identify this kind of things so uh, another a question has come up which you know everybody is using hand sanitizer and disinfectants so how do we really know the difference between real and fake and uh, is there any particular ingredient they should look for in the hand sanitizer so hand sanitizer a good hand, hand sanitizer should have 70% alcohol at least so they can check for that however you know if it's just not possible because sanitizers are also very expensive 
or so, uh, soap and water is good enough. But the hand hygiene has to be maintained. If there is a visible dirt there in the hand, there should be washing for at least one minute. In case there is no visible dirt seen, mm -hmm. at least for 30 to 40 seconds, and there is a, uh, you know, there are so many steps for uh, hand hygiene, which needs to be taught to all children. Mm. Thank you for, so much for these questions. Just one last question I'm going to ask you and then I'll sort of wrap it up. Uh, it is, you know, that children will not become upwards, children will come and that too. Once the guidelines come out, do you know how many will come? How, how long do you think from nursery upwards? Because they feel it's very difficult for them to understand social distancing, for them to understand how to use the mask, how to eat, how not to touch. So what in your mind is the... I, I know everything is evolving, but as a doctor... Uh, there is a certain, so what would you, what is your comment on that? Ma'am, I couldn't get the last part of it. I, I, the voice was not clear. Can I just, uh, can you repeat the question, ma'am? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Can yes. you hear me? Yeah, ma'am. Can you, this is about the younger children coming back to school. Because right now we've been told they're not going to come back. So how long yeah. do you think this process will take? Because, you know, the younger child cannot handle a mask. Is not aware of how to take this forward. So, what, what is your suggestion on this? Yeah, so uh, social distancing and mask with younger children will be a, definitely a problem. And um, uh, it's difficult to say, you know, how long it will take, but, um, you know, close, uh, you, they, they may be a first wave, which is going to be there till maybe August end or something. And then there is expected to be a second wave also. So I don't think, you know, the problem of Corona is going to die off very soon. We need to live with it and we need to learn about social distancing and also the mask because, you know, uh, the same thing, you, you know, we are telling our students also with the, you know, these kind of, uh, you know, things which we wear, it's so difficult to see and, you know, the surgeons find it very difficult to operate also, but we are telling them, okay, you get used to it now because it's going to stay. So I, I think we should educate our children also about it, about that this will be the norm and they need to, you know, get used to it. Correct. Yeah. And, and finally, uh, you know, uh, this whole worry about is Bikasool all right? Should I give vitamin C? Should I give vitamin D? Uh, should we have that, that drink, that Yakut? Is it good? Those probiotic drinks, are they good? Um, is there any way that you can boost uh, specific immunity to get, get COVID out of the whole thing? I mean, you know, essentially a lot of diet related issues also yeah. uh, parents are concerned about. So what, what is your view on these vitamins that uh, everybody is having these days? So uh, there is no medicines which are required in case you are having healthy diet, which Sanveer has told us. And also what you require is basically one fruit and help, two or three good helpings of uh, green vegetables. So that's what is required. Bikasol and all the other antioxidants are usually not required. They have to be from the, you know, bought from the food. And it has to be constantly there. The second thing is that uh, all the Yakut and all they contain probiotic. If you take... Uh, uh, Yogurt, that's also quite okay. Bikasus and all, I'll not suggest. Vitamin D, actually about 80 to 70, 70 to 80% of the Indian population is deficient and our food are not fortified. So I would suggest that, you know, some supplement of vitamin D to be taken in general, not for COVID, but in general. So that should be the thing. Right. And this is just for all the parents, because I know that there's a lot of questions here that have come up for me as a principal. Uh, please, uh, I, will, I will be holding workshops with you on a personal level uh, in the month of June, advising you the moment we get to know about the guidelines, how many children will be in a class, the kind of movements that will happen, the entrances and the exits, and, and we'll take it forwards because I cannot do anything without your support and your partnership. And the Springdalian parents have been amazing in that. So um, I, on that note, I would like to say that you've been absolutely marvelous uh, 
Dr. Kakkar, and so patient with us with all our questions because there's no end to the questions that we have. And when we are able to capture a doctor with us, then, you know, uh, we, we like to take the best out of him. And thank you for bringing your team. And Ramesh ji, your yes. jo yoga tha, bahut sare log pooch rahe uske baare mein, janna chahte uske baare mein. To, um, shayad agar Dr. Kakkar izazat dein, to ek dafa aur aap hamare saath workshop kariyega parents ke saath, taake wo alag se aap ke saath pura time bitaye, ghanta, deir ghanta, aur aap sare exercises hamare bachchon ko samjhaye. And uh, I would take the same, uh, uh, the opportunity again, to thank all three of you for the wonderful uh, workshop that we had today. Very informative, very interesting. And at least for us as, as, as uh, school educators, as parents, it's been really, really informative. Thank you very much, Dr. Kakkar. Thank, thank you. you for all the attendees. Thank you, uh, all, Ramesh ji. Thank, thank you so thank much, you. Uh, everybody present. And what a marvelous uh, uh, discourse there was even in the, for the nutrition. Thank you very much, my dear, for all that you have done. And uh, namaskar and to all my parents, to the students, and to my fellow uh, colleagues who may be listening to this. So thank, thank you again. Thank, thank you very much. Namaskar.